Hello there, my name's Brandon and I make pictures out of Tiny Squares. And in this video, I'm gonna be making a piece uh, that I guess came about as a way of just dealing with the summer heat. Uh, it's been fairly hot where I'm at, and uh, from what I've seen, it looks like a lot of you can probably relate to that also. So, although, you know, making some artwork doesn't necessarily have any tangible physical relief from the heat, I feel like maybe psychologically it can kind of help. Uh, even so, I am enjoying summer, and in fact, I'll already be away on vacation at the time that this video releases. So I tried to get all this finished ahead of time, and then uh, I just get to ride off into a blazing sunset and enjoy some time off. The canvas size that I'm using here is 160 by 144 pixels. Uh, which is the Game Boy sizing that I've used for these sorts of side-scroller view pieces featuring my character Nano. For this one, I'm actually translating a small section of city design that comes from a top-down piece I made a while ago on the channel, also featuring Nano. So the idea was just to use this portion of the street as the backdrop here, and then also getting to reimagine it from this alternative perspective was quite fun as well. It's actually been a really long time since I've made an entry into this series. And I know for sure I've said this in some of the other nano videos probably, but I really like working with this kind of clean cartoony line work. So a lot of things here are just kept to really simple shapes, uh, like with the ice cream truck here. This is of course one of the focal points for this piece. Uh, I wanted to have a few characters out here trying to beat the heat you know, just by sharing some ice cream. I remember that in an earlier piece I had this gorilla character working at a food stand. So I actually just grabbed that little section of window and placed him in here. And this did require a bit of rework just to make sure that he'd kind of fit in that truck. But eventually I sort of resized it and got him crammed in there. Uh, although he probably still looks a bit awkward, you know, but that might actually just be due to the way that he's looking off to where people are eating the ice cream. And I don't know, it looks kind of goofy, but I'm just going to roll with it. My larger plan for this one was more to do with the coloring. I want to try using sort of two sets of color palettes here. The main one is going to be a lot of reds and oranges to establish this general hot look for the cityscape. But then I'd like to introduce some pops of blue in the areas where they're eating ice cream. So you're almost able to see just the relief in those spots just based on the color alone. I'm not sure how that'll go, but for now I'm just setting the scene so that it'll be ready for that kind of color experiment later. One of the things I was experimenting with for the line work of the backdrop and the detailing here is that I'm just erasing a slight break between intersecting lines of different objects. I'm hoping this just makes certain spots a little bit easier to read, or less noticeable even. And this is actually something that I tend to do a lot in 1-bit style work. And in the case of 1-bit, since you're only working with two colors, uh, this sort of thing feels like a good way to improve the readability of the line work. Uh, in this case, of course, uh, I'm going to have different colors filling in these uh, areas anyway but I still think that this sort of treatment could be a nice way to soften the line work or at least give it a different sort of quality than if it were closed lines everywhere. Other than that, I'm finishing out the detailing here by translating a few more things from the original artwork, but overall I've kept it fairly plain and left a reasonable amount of room and open area just so that there's space to play with the color application. Now to come up with the color palettes, I'm gonna use this tool that recently came across my radar, the Super Color Palette Generator. Uh, what this does is it allows you to prepare really even and analytical shifting from one color into the next according to hue, saturation, and brightness. So the first thing you do is choose how many colors you want in the palette. Uh, you then select a starting color, which is known as the base color, and that's what these sliders on the left let you adjust. Then on the right side, if you start to slide the hue shift away, for instance, it's going to increment every color along the palette by that specific shift number from one to the next. In this case, I've set it to 20, so every color along the set of five gains 20 more points of hue, which in this case is shifting it into a purple. Similarly, we can adjust the saturation and the brightness with the other sliders, where, for example, a common approach would be to have the colors decrease in saturation as they get darker. So I'm gonna put both of those uh, sliders into the negative. My favorite thing about this tool so far, on top of it being just this very mechanical way to prepare a perfect hue shift, are these little dots that show up under the scale. And these indicate where each of your colors are landing along that relationship of hue, saturation, or brightness. And you can play around with uh, quite a bit more fine tuning as well. But once you are finished, you can export the palette image from over here. And then uh, that just saves as like a JPEG or PNG, and you can color pick off of it. So here are the two color palettes that I created for this piece. 
On the left, I've started it at this light orange color and stepped it down through red into a ready purple with a slight decrease in saturation and a decrease in brightness. For the cooler palette, I've started from a really low saturation blue, almost like a gray really, and then stepped it toward a bluey purple while increasing the saturation and decreasing the brightness. I'm getting the coloring started by dropping in large solid patches from the warmer palette to fill out major areas of the backdrop. To make this easier, I've created a new layer underneath my line work, so I can just create large selections or be really loose with a large brush and it'll pretty much land in a good enough place that it can just be tidied up and detailed later. For now, this was just to establish the look of the city backdrop, uh, kind of baking in the sun I guess. And then from here, I'm going to take some colors from the cool palette and start to paint in points of interest for that temperature, uh, kind of anything that I'm generally going to consider as being safe from the heat in some way. So of course that'll be things like the ice cream truck itself, but then the characters and their ice cream as well can have some applications from this palette. Once again, I'm staying relatively flat with the color in here and mainly just blocking in the dominant tones for each little section of artwork. Now I'm doing a lap around the piece to add in some detail. So whereas before a lot of the pieces just had those solid patches of color, I'm now bringing in some of the other colors to add in highlights and shadows. Uh, or just adding in general color variations to provide a bit more interest. I found that adding a little highlight edge along a lot of the structures really helps sell the look of the sun kind of beaming down on things. And this was kind of one of the trickier things really. Uh, this is a really simple style, but you know, I wanted this large sun in the background, but I didn't really want to have to cast the whole foreground in shadow and sort of lose those details. Uh, like I still want it to look like we're sort of viewing this uh, city street through this haze of heat in a sense. I also wanted to find a way to work in some type of pattern that could be characteristic of each temperature. So for the heat, I've done this uh, wavy sort of tile up in the sky and then pasted it out to get that sort of haze in the background. For the cool side of things, I'm dropping in a bunch of diamond shapes just to represent this idea of frost or snow. And I think it's this appropriate visual contrast to the roundedness of the heat in the sky. I brought this down to the sidewalk and the adjacent walls, so it's as if the entire area is being affected by the presence of this ice cream and the truck and everything. So with that, uh, everything's kind of coming together, so let's go ahead and take a look at the final piece. Here we go. All right, well, there we have it, uh, I think. <laughs> Just because of my schedule this week, I've actually had to record this commentary before I finished the artwork. So I don't know what has happened, but what I hope happened is that we're looking at a, a thing where I've added a slight touch of animation to it. Maybe some movement in the sky, maybe some of the diamonds are bouncing or something like that. Uh, if that didn't happen, then I'm sorry, but that was my intention at least. And we'll move on and close out with some CRT time. And if I wasn't able to record that either, then I'll just place a moment of silence in this part, maybe. Um, but either way, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and take care and keep it square. And stay frosty.